Trump or Biden? This is crazy, contradicting, but I'm picking Trump. You're picking Trump? Yes, I don't like Trump as a person, but I like his policies and the way he just conducts business. It's, it's, it's authentic. Personally, I voted for Biden. He made it sound good. Um, his campaign was awesome. So boom, he caught my eye, but now it's like, okay, I'm not really seeing what he said versus Trump. The wall, this, like everything just started happening. I just don't feel satisfied yet. Trump or Biden? Trump. Trump? Why? He just a real nigga. Like, I'd rather my president tell me exactly what it is than, like, beat around the bush, you know? Like, he just a real nigga. Trump or Biden? Trump. I just feel that, you know, Trump had the country on a better path as far as economically. I just don't see what Biden's really done. He put America first, so it makes sense. I like someone who like to put his people first. He wanted to make money and income, help out businesses. I, I got a business, so I, I fuck with that. Biden ain't with all that. Trump versus Biden. Trump. Can I ask why? He's just better. In what way? He knows what he's talking about, and he knows how to speak, and he doesn't go crazy while he's talking. My dad protects them both, and he likes Trump better. So. Trump or Biden? Trump. Trump? Biden's too old. Donald Trump or Joseph Biden? I don't know. He's kind of just a dope dude and he knows how to get stuff done. I'm going to have to go Trump. My boy Trump. Your boy Trump? Yep. Why? I had food poisoning today, guys. Okay. Trump versus Biden. Trump. Donald J. Trump. Why not Biden? What's wrong with Biden? Uh, I don't know if I want to get into a Oh, come on. <laughs> you already said better. you like. It doesn't need to be crazy. Trump's just way better. Trump's just yeah, better? Yeah, just like all around. <laughs> I don't know got merch. <laughs> all right, guys. So in the wake of the Trump indictment, um, we're finally getting our first polls that show whether or not the Democrat Party slash Biden administration plan of trying to affect the outcome of the 2024 election by weaponizing the state against political opponents is actually working because we're finally having polls be conducted and the polls aren't really showing what the mainstream liberal media thought they would show after Trump has been indicted twice now. The response from American voters, sharp divides and a clear test of party allegiance. In a new PBS NewsHour NPR Marist poll, half of Americans say Mr. Trump has done something illegal, including half of independents. A quarter of respondents believe he's done nothing wrong, but half of Republicans hold that view. Those feelings were on display at a GOP focus group in Iowa, assembled by pollster Sarah Longwell that the NewsHour observed. Why isn't Biden indicted? Mm -hmm. um, just because he gave them back um, at an appropriate time? I mean, really? So he did exactly the same thing. You have a current president who is sicking all of the DOJ on a potential candidate. That's never happened. In the Marist poll, Trump has seen an eight-point jump since February. 76% of Republicans and Republican-leaning voters now view him favorably. Raise your hand if it makes you support him more. Raise your hand if it makes you support him less. Americans overall feel very differently. More than half say Trump should drop out of the presidential race, including 58% of independents. But for Republicans, nearly two thirds say Trump will have their support in the GOP primary. Just one third say they'll support another candidate. Because the American people clearly understand that this is a political witch hunt. And quite honestly, um, Biden is doing so bad that again, people I think are having a lot of buyer's remorse when it comes to Trump, okay? They realize that, hey, uh, the mainstream liberal media, for as much as they complain about Orange Man bad, uh, the economy was good, our borders were secure, crime was down, and we were respected on the world stage. Life was just a lot better under Trump. So voters are basically saying, look, if I got to choose between what life was like under Trump and life now, uh, I'm going with Trump. And I don't blame them, right? So again, it doesn't matter if Trump is in prison. It doesn't matter if he's under investigation, if he's charged with crimes. Americans simply care about the fact that under Trump, life was better. And it's reflected in the polls because the polls are showing that the political witch hunt against President Trump just simply is not working. In fact, uh, liberal media host Jonathan Carl uh, was shocked and was stumbling for words, literally stumbling for words, trying to describe the fact that Trump's approval rating actually went up post 
indictment. I mean, it truly is a fascinating thing to watch. But before we get into that, I just want to let you guys know. If you like my channel and you want to support my channel, you can check out my merch. For example, my signature racist mugs, which is a daily reminder of the 2023 definition of racist according to the left, which is anybody who disagrees with the Democrat Party. You can get that at my website, gformabcp.com. Get 20% off using discount code TEAMBCP. So without further ado, roll the clip. So Rick, I want to get to you about, about the political impact of that indictment. Let's take a look at a poll taken entirely after the indictment was announced and unsealed uh, from NPR. It showed that Trump's favorable ratings actually went from 70, uh, 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 76 percent. I'm sorry, his favorable 76, 60. You got me. I'm mixed up here. But <laughs> let, let me start. Let me start all over. The, 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 the bottom line is his favorable ratings actually increased and his unfavorable ratings went down among Republican voters and independents who lean Republican. So in other words, his standing among Republicans actually has improved since this indictment was announced. Yeah. Let, let, let me try to put some oxygen back in the room. Don, I, I want to try to do another poll, I'll try to do this a little cleaner this time. <laughs> uh, but uh, a poll from Quinnipiac on a, on a possible Biden-Trump match matchup puts Biden at 48%. Trump at 44 percent. This is a poll, again, uh, taken largely after the indictment. Uh, I mean, that's got to make you a little nervous. That's within the margin of error. That is a statistical tie. The race was close before the indictment. The race is going to be close no matter what happens. So what does that say about now? Biden? If what, he's what barely it, beating no, or in some polls it, actually it, it, say, it says that the country is very divided. It says that the country is, is really looking to get beyond 2020. It says a lot about where we are as a nation, not where we are in terms of who's personally popular at this time. Yeah, I mean, it says a lot about Biden, right? It says a whole lot about Biden. And we're going to talk about Biden here in a little bit. But here's the thing. What I find to be hilarious about this is that they're focusing on everybody except Biden. They're focusing on Trump, 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 Trump. When we know that in order to beat Trump, the best way to beat Trump really is to ignore Trump, right? Uh, the less attention that the mainstream liberal media gives Trump, the weaker that he gets, the more attention that they give Trump, the stronger that he gets. I don't understand why they haven't learned this in what it's been, what, seven, eight years now, almost right. Since Trump's been around, uh, the attacks don't make Trump weaker. They just make him stronger. And that's why it's hilarious when the GOP, the establishment tries to run kamikaze candidates like Chris Christie, who's literally only in the race to take down Trump. To do nothing but talk junk about Trump because we know that he's actually not trying to win because he can't even get the most basic layup issue of the Republican Party. Crap. Take a look. Republican governors across the country have been banning hormone therapy and puberty blockers for transgender people under 18 years old, though only they're banning those procedures only as trans health procedures. They can still do them for other purposes, uh, puberty blockers, etc. As governor of New Jersey, you signed into law some legal protections for trans people, including students. What do you make of your fellow Republican governors and candidates going in the opposite direction? Jake, what I believe we should be focused on most importantly in these issues is making sure there is parental involvement at every step along the way. Um, I don't think that the government should ever be stepping into the place of the parents in helping to move their children through a process where those children are confused um, or, or concerned about their gender. Um, and, and I just would say that parents are the people who are best positioned to make these judgments. And so what I'd like to make sure each state does is require that parents be involved in these decisions. You know, we're talking about students. I assume you mean people under the age of 18, Jake. And the fact is that folks who are under the age of 18 should have parental support and guidance and love as they make all of the key decisions of their life. And this should not be one that's excluded by the government in any way. Yeah, so clearly that guy is not trying to win the Republican primary. He's simply not trying to win, okay? He's literally in the race to do nothing but attack Trump. Um, it's not going to work, okay? Because the attacks are only going to make Trump stronger. Chris Christie is only going to make Trump stronger, especially in the Republican primary. Now, when it comes to the general election, okay, a potential Trump versus Biden matchup, again, it's very simple, man. People understand how it was under Trump versus how it is now. It was better under Trump than it is now. And it also doesn't help that Joe Biden is incoherent and quite literally getting laughed at while doing speeches, not because his jokes are funny. 
is because he's struggling to even give a basic speech. Take a look. Because a federally licensed gun dealer is required by law to run background checks on those he's selling a weapon to. And in most cities down in Philadelphia and New York, areas I know well, like up here, you'd see a truck pull up, pull to the curb and selling weapons, selling guns, selling AR-15, selling weapons. Well, guess what? You do that now, you go to jail. You made it harder for people to buy stabilized brief, braces. You put a pistol on a brace, it may, turns into a gun. Makes it more, you can have a higher caliber weapon, a higher caliber bullet coming out of that gun. Well, we're going to win and we're going to help. We have plans to build a railroad from the Pacific all the way across the Indian Ocean. We have plans to build in, 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 in Angola, one of the largest solar plants in the world. I can go on, but I'm not. I'm going off script. I'm going to get in trouble. Realize the world's leading emitters to help poor countries deal with the impacts of climate change. They called it the G7, the Build Back Biden, Build Back Better. And we realized that got confusing. So now we don't call it that. What we call it is, here's the bottom line. Look, we're the ones that caused the problem. The United States, we cleared all our land. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Joe Biden, okay? He said he was going off script, right? His handler's gonna get upset. Yes, Joe, you were going off script, okay? I wonder, is this map, this Joe's idea of building a railroad from the uh, Pacific to the Indian Ocean? <laughs> Golly, man, okay? This man said, build back Biden, right? Build back Biden. I don't understand why people like Jonathan Carl are surprised <laughs> that the American people still want Trump, right? When that's the alternative. The alternative is Biden. Why are the polls close between Trump and Biden? Well, that's why, right? <laughs> because the economy is not great. Crime is out of control. The border is out of control. We're embarrassed on the world stage. There's a lot of issues in this country. Biden's not really doing a great job with those issues, okay? And uh, Trump, okay, for as much as, again, the dude has flaws, right? Um... Again, people care about results, right? At the end of the day, they care about their wallet. They care about the economy. Uh, they care about the border. They care about the actual real issues. And on the real issues, Trump is just better. And people know that. People know that, okay? So, I mean, look, it's just hilarious to me to watch the mainstream liberal media get upset when they realize that their plan against Trump is just not working. I mean, I just did a video a couple days ago about The View getting upset when they figured out that Trump can actually still be president if he goes to jail, right? They were so upset. Whoopi was like, I'm freaking out about this. Okay, Jonathan Call is upset. He's freaking out about the fact that the polls are still virtually tied. Some polls got Trump winning. Um, even though, again, Trump has been charged, right? He's actually more popular among Republicans the more that they come after him, okay? It's just, it's hilarious to watch the mainstream liberal media uh, freak out as their plan to take down Trump fails. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.